and then and I'll go just chopping some turkey butts okay okay <laughs> Hi, my name is Samin Nasrat. I'm a contributor to New York Times Cooking. And for this year's Thanksgiving, which is definitely different for all of us, I thought I would contribute my buttermilk marinated roast turkey. And the special trick to make it really perfect and get you that golden brown skin is spatchcocking. So today I'm gonna teach you how to cut out the backbone, flatten out the turkey, and bring something really fantastic to the table for a crowd. This is a redux of one of the, my most comforting and favorite recipes, which is my buttermilk marinated roast chicken. A lot of people over the years have asked me if they can adapt this to turkey. And so this year I finally set out to figure out if it's possible. The truth is it's just as simple as the chicken. You do get that moistness that's in that classic buttermilk chicken that everyone loves. You get that beautiful dark brown skin that's so dramatic at the table. By spatchcocking it, you dramatically cut down the cooking time. So I do feel like this bird is a real winner at the table. Okay, here's my turkey. I defrosted it for a couple days in the refrigerator and now I am going to get it ready to spatchcock and then brine. We just wanna make sure we've taken everything out of the cavity. I actually like to take the wingtip and the first wing tip, wing joint off because to me, that's a far better addition to make a richer stock. But I know some people really like eating that at the table. So what you can do is leave that on and then when it comes time to roast, you just fold, fold it under like this to prevent those wingtips from burning. But I'm gonna go ahead and snip them off. I kind of look for where that like movement originates and that's how I'm gonna know where to cut here. There we go, that's it, easy. And commence with the spatchcocking. Spatchcocking refers to removing the backbone and then flattening out the bird. So it's really like just one straight line. There's not like really complicated butchery to do. <laughs> the most helpful tip I ever received from a chef about how to spatchcock is don't do one side completely and then try and do the second side. It's kind of like you zigzag. Work a little bit of the way down on one side, then work a little bit of the way down on the other side. Here we go. And now I'm just gonna use all of my body weight. I'm gonna press down to smush down the bird so that it lays flat. And I'm gonna hear a couple cracks. That'll be the sound of the cartilage and the breastbone. <laughs> okay, there we go. Looks good. All right, so now we're gonna get ready to make the buttermilk brine, which couldn't be easier. It's just buttermilk and salt. To make things easier and prevent spilling, I'm gonna work in a two gallon zipper top bag inside of a bowl. First, I'm just gonna pour three quarts of buttermilk into the bag. I'm gonna add the salt in and stir it to dissolve. Now that we've made our salty buttermilk brine, all we do is we put the bird in, put it in the fridge, rotate it every maybe 12 hours if we think about it, and call it a day. It's a lot easier if the breast is facing down in the bag. It rests a lot happier in the fridge. It took me a few tries to figure out the perfect ratio of thyme and salt for this recipe to make sure that the turkey is perfectly seasoned for the table. And the truth is you really do need the full two days of marinating to make sure that flavor comes through and that seasoning comes through. It's just time. There's not really any work. This probably is the simplest turkey you've ever roasted and it'll be worth it at the table, promise. So first, to bring it up to temperature, carefully take it out of the buttermilk. You don't need to be super crazy. There you go. This is a 12 pound bird. It'll probably take maybe, I would say between two to three hours. And the reason you want it to be at room temperature before it goes in the oven is so that it cooks more evenly and more quickly. It's important at this step to just get as much of this buttermilk off as possible because otherwise it's gonna burn in the oven. So there's just let as much drip off right now. Hello. <laughs> and you don't need to be like super duper obsessive. You don't need to get a paper towel or anything, but just scrape off as much buttermilk as possible. Okay, so it's been a couple hours. The turkey is now perfectly at room temperature. 
and I'm gonna transfer it onto my wire wrap. The thighs are gonna wanna go, you know, one of two directions. They're gonna wanna be this way or this way. And for me, I think it's, it's a much nicer thing to roast them this way with the thighs pointed inward, because that way I'm gonna get maximal browning on the bird. This is a 12 pound turkey. It'll probably cook about 90 minutes. And we'll just keep checking until both the breast and the thigh come up to temperature. It's been about 45 minutes and it's browning quite quickly. So I'm gonna tent it. Okay, so the turkey's done. I pulled it out when the thigh reached 165 degrees and the breast reached about 150 degrees. And then I let it rest for 20 minutes. It's really important to let it rest so that the juices can redistribute all over the bird and the meat can really relax. The beauty of the spatchcocking and the buttermilk is that you get this brown caramelized skin so evenly over the whole bird which is not something I always see in a classic turkey, <laughs> especially in the spots um, kind of like in the thigh area. So I love this because there's so much crispy skin that everybody gets to eat at the table. And just like I did with the spatchcocking, I go ahead and score both sides before I take one side off. It'll make taking the second side off a lot easier later. So I do feel like this bird is a real winner at the table. Like I think that this is, if this is your first Thanksgiving ever, or if you feel like you've never had a success with a turkey, this is totally one that's gonna make you feel like you won. <laughs> this is one where I feel like I won. <laughs> I hope this really makes everyone's Thanksgiving simple and delicious. And I know it's kind of a wacky year, but I hope it's a fun one.